Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the module assistance video for lesson 1.7, Calculations in Analytical Chemistry. So I'll try to go over this module fast. And because it's a video, so maybe uh, if there are questions or if you would want to go over something again, you can just pause um, and digest and then play again. So without further ado, let's proceed first. We only have one target for this module, that is to express the concentration of solutions using different methods of expressing them. So which of the following terms do you still recall? The mole, molality, molarity, mole fraction, ppm or parts per million, and ppb. So this would have been discussed from chemistry one that was during your grade nine. And then you also had this, uh, an, a more extensive um, encounter with this from grade 10. Okay, so here in the seven fundamental SI units, we have the units of kilogram, meter, second, Kelvin, mole, ampere, and candela. But for our lesson, we would be dealing mostly with the units for mass, mostly in grams, and then for amount of substance, which is the mole. So uh, let me just remind you that the SI unit for mass is kilogram, even though we mostly use gram. And compared to the other SI units where, which do not have prefixes, Mass, on the other hand, already has a prefix na kilo, but we mostly use gram. Next, these are the different prefixes for the units, so you should already be familiar with them, although the most common prefixes that we use would be the kilo, centi, milli, micro. Those are the usual prefixes that we use. So next, we, the first concept that we would review on would be the mole. So the mole is the SI unit for amount of substance. It's the amount of chemical substance that contains the same number of particles present in 12 grams of carbon-12. So that is equivalent to Avogadro's number or 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. That means we have a large number of particles contained or a large number of carbon-12 atoms contained in 12 grams of a carbon sample. So molar mass is the mass of a, of a compound in grams per mole of that substance. For example, if we have one mole of glucose, the mass of one mole of glucose would be 12 plus 1 plus 16 with a total mass of 180 grams per mole. So 180 grams would be the mass of a glucose sample containing 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of glucose. And that would in turn contain 12 moles or 12 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles of hydrogen. Okay, and then 6 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles of carbon atoms and oxygen atoms. Next, millimole and mole calculation. So a millimole is simply one over a thousand of a mole. For example, for this problem, find the number of moles and millimoles of benzoic acid that are contained in two grams of pure acid. So for this problem, we are using this symbol for benzoic acid. Notice that this is not its molecular formula. It's just a shorthand representation of benzoic acid, HBZ. 
with a molar mass 122.1 grams per mole. So to get the number of moles of benzoic acid, we start with the two grams of benzoic acid, then use the molar mass. We actually multiply it by the reciprocal of the molar mass, or in other words, we divide it by the molar mass to get 0 0.0164 moles of benzoic acid. And then for the millimoles of benzoic acid, we use this molar mass. This is already in terms of millimoles. So because it's gram per millimole, then uh, we have adjusted the, the quantity for the molar mass. And we express the number of millimoles as 16.4 millimoles benzoic acid. So you can do this, or I am sure you are more familiar with the molar mass of uh, whatever particle or compound. So you can actually start, you can, if you'd like to know the number of millimoles, you can just multiply this with another conversion factor, which is one gram equals 1,000 milligrams. Okay, so you can just have another factor. In if you tend to be confused with using the second solution. Another example, what is the mass in grams of sodium ion with an atomic mass or molar mass of 22.99 grams per mole and 25 grams of sodium sulfate with this molar mass? So to get the mass of sodium ion, we start from the mass of the sodium sulfate, then convert it into moles sodium sulfate using its molar mass. So I will not show any more how to get the molar mass of sodium sulfate. Just know that 142 grams equals the molar mass of sodium times two plus the molar mass of sulfur plus the molar mass of oxygen times four. So that would be equal to 142.0 grams. Okay, and then from the moles sodium sulfate, we convert it into moles sodium ion with the ratio coming from the fact that there are two sodium ions dissociating when uh, dissociating when sodium sulfate is dissolved or simply that there are two sodium atoms in this formula. So after getting the mole sodium ion, we convert it to grams sodium ion using the molar mass per sodium. So we are from the periodic table, those are the masses for the atom. However, notice that this is an ion, but we do not consider its mass to change even if it has lost an electron because electrons are very light. So anyway, again, this is the process. We start with the mass of sodium sulfate, and then we convert it into moles sodium sulfate using the molar mass of sodium sulfate, convert it into moles of sodium using the uh, number of sodium atoms or ions in this chemical formula, and then convert it into mass of sodium atom. And then we simply cancel out all the units, carry over the last and final unit, carry, the ca carry out the calculations to get the final answer of 8.10 grams sodium. Next, we move on to units of concentrations, starting off with molarity. Molarity is defined as the number of moles of solute over the total volume of the solution in liters. This is also defined as the number of millimoles of solute over the number of milliliters of the solution. So very important to note here, aside from the units themselves would be uh, where or which quantity they belong to. For example, in the numerator, this is the moles of the solute only, while in the denominator, this belongs to the solution as a whole and not just of the solvent. 
For example, calculate the molar concentration of ethanol in an aqueous solution that contains 2.30 grams of ethanol with a molar mass of 46.07 grams per mole in 3.5 liters of solution. So we simply substitute in the formula, except that because we're given the mass of ethanol, we would still have to convert it into moles using its molar mass before dividing it over 3.50 liters of solution to get the final answer in three significant figures. So we should have three significant figures. And that's the final answer. Next, for percent concentration, um, aside from saying that the unit is in percent, it is also indicated whether the percentage is in terms of weight over weight, volume per volume, or weight per volume. So in those three different cases, then we would have the weight of solute over weight of the solution, the volume of the solute over the volume of the solution, or the weight of the solute over volume of the solution times 100%. And if it's uh, written as weight per volume, the weight is usually expressed in grams and the volume in ml. For parts per thousand, parts per million, and parts per billion, that is simply the ratio of the mass of the solute over the mass of the solution times a factor depending on if it's per thousand, per million, or per billion. So times 1,000 for a thousand, times a million for ppm, times a billion for ppb. And it's also equivalent to the following units. For parts per thousand, a ppt is equivalent to one gram per liter, a ppm is equivalent to one milligram per liter, and a ppb is equivalent to one microgram per liter. You can do the conversion on your own using dimensional analysis, but these units are equivalent. For example, what is the molar concentration of potassium ion in a solution that contains 63.3 ppm or parts per million of this compound with this molar mass. So since 63.3 ppm of K3FeCN6 is equivalent to uh, the same number in milligrams per liter, then we simply interchange or replace this unit so that we can convert the numerator in milligrams into grams and into moles and convert the denominator into, um, no, there is no need to convert the denominator anymore because it's already in liters of solution. So we only need to convert the numerator, 63.3 milligrams, convert it into grams, and then convert it into moles using the, mol the molar mass of the compound that we're given. And we have the final answer to be in supposedly four, uh, three significant figures, 1.92 times 10 to the negative four molar. Okay, uh, that is not the final answer yet because we're asked for the molar concentration of the potassium ion. So to get the molar, the concentration of the potassium ion, we simply use the mole ratio because there are three potassium ions contained in one formula of this compound. So that's just three moles of potassium ion for every one mole of that compound. So our final answer is 5.77 times 10 to the negative 4. Okay, so... Um, notice that in this calculation, we have a middle, we have a middle, uh, an intermediate result, which is the molarity of the compound that we're given. So you can, um, you can 
get that intermediate value. Uh, so that is why um, there's still four significant figures before rounding off to the final answer with three significant figures. However, you can simply continue this calculation, this part. So from here, simply multiply immediately this mole ratio, okay? Or, or this stoichiometric ratio. So that you do not need to write this down or, or copy it again. Uh, simply multiply this and you'll get the final answer 5.77 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. Next, P functions. It is convenient to express very small concentration of chemical substances in terms of its P function. For example, pH or P of any other substance. That simply means that you'll have to take the negative log of the molar concentration of that species. For example, calculate the p-value for each ion in a solution that is 2.00 times 10 to the negative 3 molar sodium chloride and 5.4 times 10 to the negative 4 molar HCl. So we have a solution and it's actually a mixture containing already sodium chloride and hydrochloric acid. So because both are strong electrolytes, then we would expect that the sodium ion, uh, the sodium ion dissociating from the sodium chloride would also have a concentration of two times 10 to the negative three molar. And then this sodium chloride would be giving off that same concentration of the chloride ion. So we have here, 2.0 times 10 to the negative 3 molar for the chloride ion. But the hydrochloric acid will also contribute 5.4 times 10 to the negative 4. So there, we'd have to add the two values to get the total chloride concentration. And the hydronium ion concentration would be 5.4 times 10 to the negative 4. So you have learned from grade 10 that water itself would already contain hydronium ion. However, because there's a different source for the hydronium ion this time, we simply neglect the 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7 um, hydronium ion coming from the auto-ionization of water. So we assume the hydronium ion concentration to simply be 5.4 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. So to get the P functions of all of these substances, we simply get the negative log of their molar concentrations. And for the pH, that's 3.27. Notice also that uh, we are applying still the rules for the number of significant figures. Here we have three significant figures. So we have three decimal places. For PCL, we also have three significant figures. So we have three decimal places in the final answer for the P function. And for the pH, we only have two decimal places. Uh, we, have, we only have two significant figures in the given. Therefore, we have two decimal places in the final answer. Next, density and specific gravity of solutions. So density and specific gravity are important for these types of problems because they will be correlating or they will enable us to interchange between volume and mass of solution. So the specific gravity, if given, is unitless. However, we this is simply the ratio of any liquid, the ratio of the density of any liquid to the density of water, which is just one. So um, it's not really very confusing. For density, it may be expressed in kilograms per liter or grams per ml or grams per cm cubed. And that is just the same as grams per ml. Another example, calculate the molar concentration of nitric acid 
in a solution that has a specific gravity of 1.42 and is 70.5% in nitric acid. So this is an example of a problem where we would need to interconvert nitric acid, nitric acid's molar concentration from its mass percentage, kasi weight per weight. So how do we get the molarity? We simply start with the mass percent. Starting from 70.5% nitric acid. So 70.5% nitric acid. Mm. Okay, now the solution started with the specific gravity or the density. We started with 1.42 kilograms of the reagent per liter of the reagent. Then it converted the mass to it converted the mass in kilograms to grams using this conversion factor. And then um, it multiplied. Okay. It converted the mass, the grams reagent, into grams of nitric acid. Okay, 70.5 grams nitric acid per 100 grams of reagent. Now, where is this from? This concept is simply from the percent composition. So for every 70, because it's expressed in percentage, this simply means that for every 100 grams of solution, you have 70.5 grams of the solute. So that is where this comes from. And now that we have converted into grams nitric acid, we can convert into moles nitric acid using the molar mass. And then finally, notice that we can cancel out all of the units so that we have the final unit of moles nitric acid per liter of reagent. And then the final answer for that would be 15.9 molar nitric acid. Okay, so I have just explained to you how the module has computed or solved this problem. However, my personal preference would be to start with the, because it's a conversion problem, from percent weight per weight to molar concentration, my personal preference would be to start with the original concentration and end with the final concentration. So if we do that, we'll have to start with 70.5% nitric acid. Again, we, would, we can interpret that to be 70.5 grams nitric acid all over 100 grams of solution. So that would be like this. So we will start with this and then I would have to convert the grams nitric acid into moles using the molar mass. So my next factor would be this and then my numerator uh, would be my desired numerator already to get molarity. Then the next thing I would do would be to convert the grams reagent or the denominator part into liter solution. So how do I do that? I would be using the density, 1.42 grams per ml. Okay, so you can immediately use kilogram per liter, but I usually, or I am just more comfortable with using grams per ml, so I would usually just multiply this with 1.42 grams in the numerator and per ml. And then finally, I would be converting the ml into liters by multiplying it with 1,000 ml over liter. Then cancel everything and then I would be getting the same answer. Okay, so that depends. There is no um, specific solution for you to solve this problem, you simply just use whatever it is that is most comfortable for you for as long as 
you do the computations properly, the units are properly cancelled. So that ends the lesson. Okay? For the navigate part, you have five problems. First, find the number of sodium ions in 2.92 grams of sodium phosphate. So how do we do this? Simply start with the mass of sodium phosphate and then convert it into moles sodium phosphate then convert it into moles sodium ion using the mole ratio in the formula, and then convert it into, from the number of moles of sodium ions, use Avogadro's number to get the number of sodium ions. Number two, how many moles of carbon are in 333 milligrams of calcium oxalate? So, to get the number of moles of carbon again, you, it's the same, it's almost the same problem. You start with the mass of this compound, convert it into moles of this compound, convert it into moles of carbon, and that's the final answer. Number three, how many millimoles of potassium uh, thiocyanate is in 750 ml of 3.25 times 10 to the negative 3 molar solution? So, Um, millimoles, seven, okay. Simply, to get the number of moles, simply multiply the volume with the concentration or molarity, you'll get millimoles. That's just it. Express molarity in millimoles per ml. Or if you're not comfortable with that and you really want to express molarity in moles per liter, then you'll have to convert it, this first into liter so that you can cancel. Your final answer would be in moles. Then you'd have to convert it back to millimoles. Calculate the p-values of the hydrogen, chloride, and zinc ion, ions in a mixture of 0.4 molar HCl and 0.10 molar zinc chloride. So for the hydronium ion, that would be the negative log of 0.4. For the zinc 2 plus ion, that would be the negative log of 0.1. On the other hand, we'd have to add up 0.4 molar of HC of chloride ions coming from HCl and 2 times 0.1 molar of chloride ions coming from zinc chloride and then get the negative log of that. And don't forget that you'd have to apply the rules for significant figures. Number five, sea water contains an average of 1.08 times 10 cube ppm of sodium ions and 270 ppm of sulfate ions. Calculate the molar concentrations of sodium and sulfate ions given that the average density of sea water is 1.02 times uh, 1.02 grams per ml. So in this case, Okay, we are given density. So you would just have to, from density, grams per ml, you'd have to convert. You can start with a 1.08 times 10 cube ppm of sodium ions then express the ppm in milligrams per liter, then convert the milligrams into moles. Same with the sulfate ions. So that would be all for the navigate part of this lesson. Okay, I, ho I hope that this has helped you digest module 1.7. Bye class!